Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not kidding. malicious. That's what oh, his really? FBI, idea. his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well an idea. Antifa is just an idea. That is interesting. I can't wait to hear what Andy has to say about that. Joining me now, my friend Andy No, senior editor at the Post Millennial. He also wrote the book called Unmasked, with the little inside baseball on Antifa. Andy, did you write an entire book about an idea? Yes, it is an idea, but it's also a movement of networks that involves violent militants who carry out organized criminality on the streets of America and other countries as well. Okay, I want, actually want to pause there. I want to focus on the back part of there, other countries. Americans in general, well, look, everyone in general focuses on their own home first. We don't realize this is an international thing, but it is, isn't it? Yeah, the original German Antifa were paramilitary, paramilitary of the German Communist Party during the Weimar Republic. And the current Antifa, wherever they may be, uh, in Western countries quite often, um, model themselves off of that sort of street thuggery, street violence type of a group. Uh, in fact, right now, in speaking of other countries, in Germany, just this last week, there were three high-profile Antifa members who were convicted for carrying out a series of attacks on people using hammers, crowbars, uh, baseball bats. And in reaction to the uh, convictions, Antifa in Leipzig in Eastern Germany have, for, on Friday and Saturday night, rioted and set things on fire, which is very similar to what experienced what Americans experienced in 2020 from coast to coast. You had groups of people dressed head to toe in black, uh, pre-announcing the violence on Twitter at that time and making good on those promises of violence. And not only did they just destroy property and set buildings on fire that were occupied by people, but they also eventually ended up killing as well, like in my home city of Portland, Oregon, one self-described Antifa member who left behind a manifesto carried out a shooting of a Trump supporter and then went on uh, a run and was hunted down by a, um, a task for federal task force and died in a shootout in Washington state. I remember that like it was yesterday. By the way, if you want to know a little more about that Antifa history, I write about it too. The Germany, the Weimar, direct links there. By the way, Ant uh, Andy, uh, these people, I realize that they're separate cells, like, like many terrorist organizations, but can you describe who are they? What's the mentality of these people? Are they homeless people? Are they rich kids? Are they white, black, Indians? Are they, are they Christians? Are they atheists? Who are these people? Who does this? The ideology of Antifa is atheistic, unsurprisingly. I mean, their MO is to carry out acts of violence against their political opponents. And they th do that through brainwashing their ideologues to view the other side as less than human, uh, whose lives are worthless and therefore can be beaten on the head with a bike lock or a crowbar or shot to death. And they celebrate those types of actions. The ideology is, is anarchist communism. And these are violent revolutionary uh, leftists, is how I would summarize it. Um, this isn't necessarily a new story. America in the 60s and 70s had already dealt with communist revolutionaries who did things like kill people, kill law enforcement, engaged in all sorts of organized criminality. I'm talking about like the Weather Underground and, and other communist terrorists. But um, I mean, what happens often is not not often, actually every time is that with these far left extremists, they are um, welcomed back into a mainstream polite society. So in the case of the Weather Underground members, after they were um, targeted by the FBI, convicted, sent to prison, some of them escaped abroad. I'm thinking of like Asata Shakur, who was a member of the Black Liberation Army who fled to Cuba and still wanted today and is a hero to Black Lives Matter. Um, these people are seen as heroes. Um, they went back into academia to brainwash more generations of leftists that we see today. 
And, you know, going back to what Biden said about Antifa is an idea, the FBI said Antifa is an idea, that's part of the picture, but ideas can be really, really dangerous. I mean, worldwide uh, global jihadism is, you could argue, argue an idea, but they killed hundreds of thousands of people over many decades now in the West, in the Middle East, in Africa, all over the world. So don't un underestimate the extremism of a movement just because it is organized around an idea. I mean, terrorists organize around ideas. Andy, how do they get their money? I, I remember like it was yesterday story, they were actually stopped by the grace of God. I think it was in Idaho during the 2020 riots of Antifa got stopped on their way in to terrorize some Idaho town, but they were stopped with a line of Mercedes vans that had bricks in them and all the works. Well, a Mercedes van, whether you're renting it or buying it, is not cheap. These people are funded from somewhere by someone. Do we have any idea from where? Yes, uh, it's basically done. The funding is actually not really done in secret. It's done out in the open. So you, they have ad hoc groups that are established and they use things like GoFundMe or Cash App or Venmo, Venmo to fundraise part of it. But a lot of them um, actually re rely on registered nonprofits. So um, in Atlanta right now, prosecutors uh, in Georgia just last uh, last week on the 31st of May carried out an, a raid and made three arrests um, of three members of the Atlanta Solidarity Fund. And those three suspects have been charged with money laundering and a charity fraud. Um, I looked at the affidavit, um, prosecutors alleged that they did money laundering in the tens of thousands of dollars. Now this organization is Antifa linked, you can see it all, all over in their ideology, and they're accused of illegally um, fundraising support, financial support for the domestic terrorism suspects that were arrested in Atlanta last year and earlier this year. So uh, a lot of this money is funneled through and fundraised through tax-free non non-profit groups done right under our, our noses often with the, the blessing of politicians politicians either knowingly or not will sometimes even promote the links to these extremist groups Andy okay so who's giving to the nonprofits is this uh, surely Soros's fingers are in this thing somewhere so you have a lot of small donations coming from many people and I mean by small, I mean they're not insignificant. You're looking at hundreds and thousands of dollars being donated on an individual level, which adds up. Um, and some of these uh, nonprofit groups, um, leftist organizations that have received funding from let's say George Soros, um, or, or rather his organizations that he funds. Um, how it funnels down to the activists is more so in the form of, well, what's really clear is uh, in, in supporting the campaigns of really radical leftist uh, district attorneys who then are part of this apparatus that create jurisdictions that in a way become a bit lawless when it comes to left-wing violence because the prosecutors are um, ideologic, uh, ideologues to so-called progressive causes and will choose to not pursue left-wing uh, political violence. And this has enacted, uh, caused so much violence and destruction in cities like, in, like Portland or, or Seattle. I mean, I can go on and on, um, but it's, the Soros money is just one part of the component. It's a big part because really it's prosecutors who choose really to go after criminals or not, criminal suspects or not. And at least in the case of Portland, during the riots of 2020, there were a whole list of riot-related crimes, felonies, that were decriminalized as an official policy under uh, the leftist prosecutor that came in, Mike Schmidt, who still is in office today. Yeah, Andy, appreciate you, man. For too long, we've been led to believe that communism is a thing of the past. But the truth is, communism is alive. It's here, and it's infiltrating every aspect of American life. 
Introducing the Anti-Communist Manifesto by Jesse Kelly, the practical guide for patriots ready to defend our nation from its most dangerous enemy. Discover the shocking extent of communist infiltration in our education system, their alliance with American corporations, and the twisted truth behind environmentalism. This eye-opening book exposes the true face of communism and empowers you to fight back. Join the fight for freedom. The Anti-Communist Manifesto, a new must-read book from Jesse Kelly. Get your copy today at jessekellybook.com or wherever books are sold.